What's going on YouTube? I had the chance to sit down and have an impromptu Let's Chat episode with Mod Sponge, who is a RuneScape content developer. He's responsible for a lot of the recent Elder God Wars updates, and he's also a friend of mine. So we sat down and we chopped it up for a couple hours. We covered a variety of different topics, and this is the first of two parts. In this one, we talked about the Zamorak release and how he felt about it retroactively. We also spoke on Elite Dungeon 4 and general combat balance in RuneScape right now. There are a lot of really fun sound bites, and I think it's a really interesting discussion, so feel free to listen in, and I hope you guys enjoy. In part two that will air one week from today, we talked about a lot of future stuff. Content design, combat, abilities, and we also opened up the floor to my Twitch chat so that they could ask any questions they wanted to. With that said, I hope you guys enjoy. No, absolutely. So I wanted to start off by talking about Zami stuff, and then we can move on to some other stuff as well, if you're good with that. I absolutely am, yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about with Zami, um, was designing a boss. There are a lot of steps, right? It's a, it's a huge, huge process that I think most people don't have a good understanding of. I certainly don't have a good understanding of. So the first question I was going to ask is just, what is an aspect of boss design, um, or designing a project like Zami that is like maybe overlooked by the community? Something that maybe people wouldn't think, you know, requires a ton of time or a lot of effort. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, I think what a lot of players don't necessarily see is the iterations on designs. Um, a lot of the times that you'll kind of see something player face and it'll be like, oh, why did you do it in this exact way? Clearly you've designed it like that from the beginning when that's not necessarily the case. Like there's so many changes that happen during development that players never see. Um... So with Zami, for an example, how many like different iterations of, let's say, like whether it's like the mechanics or... Yeah, we can go to the mechanics. That's probably the, the easiest one. Mm. Would you say there would have been? Um, that's a good question. As, so obviously, there's, there's mechanics that never made it. Um, there's mechanics that never made it past design. There's... Um, Mechanics that made it into the boss fight then that were then pulled um, because we playtested them and it just felt horrendous. I remember one of them being um, pulled as well from the playtesting. Do you remember that oh, one? Oh, really? Oh, no, I'm not sure I do. Well, the icon above your head, when Sam and I were playtesting it, it would disappear before you got into oh, a furnace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was brutal. Um, that was always intended to be at like a certain enrage. You'd lose the symbols. You had to track the symbol that got thrown at you. And yeah, that's one of those that in play test was like, this is, this just feels horrible. Let's remove it. Um, but like one of the mechanics that we made originally, I say, I shouldn't say we, because <laughs> Raman hated it from the beginning, really. Okay. Um, there were these two pillars that would spawn. Um, this was in place of the, the two witches. And whilst a pillar was up, Zami took half damage. With the intention being that these would spawn um if we got the timing right kind of as a strong dps team would be about to kind of phase him so it's like do, do we continue trying to do damage to the boss just to kind of get him to the phase knowing that he's now hit a 50 percent damage reduction or do we go okay we're wasting our time here and go and go kill the the uh the pillars um and did the Obviously, pillars stay up after the phase HP? But I guess you can clear yeah, yeah, them yeah, after. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. not get yeah, they, they they reset after a timer, um, which looking back at is horrendous. All that does is punish bad players. Really, like if you're if you're doing a slow kill, we've just made it even slower. It kind of reminds me of Siryu, where you just the less your damage yes. output is, the more damage you have to deal. Yeah, it's just, it's a similar thing. Um, it, yeah, it was one of those where RuneScape players just like doing damage, right? It doesn't matter how you affect their damage. They're going to hate it if you restrict their damage. Um, so yeah, that was that was something we pulled because the feeling in playtest was just like you had the one guy going into Infernus and dealing with the the witch, and then the rest of the team was like, "Cool, do pillars, do a little bit of damage to Zami, do pillars," and it just it just felt bloated and horrible and super slow. Um, so that's that's just like one of those mechanics that players don't see get designed and then pulled um, purely because they don't feel good. 
No, for sure. And I think that's one of the things that Sammy does really, really well. It's definitely my favorite boss in the game right now. And I think the thing I like about it is you deal so much damage. You take so much damage. It's just it's it's just a crazy rush the whole time. And yeah, absolutely. I think people probably hearing about that mechanic are thinking, yeah, that doesn't sound like uh, it, thematically great or fun. super fun either. But surely you go through so many different ideas and iterations, especially early stages, because you have to arrive on, you know, five or six kind of core mechanics that repeat through the fight. That's the thing, right? Um, and with Zami especially, you have those five or six mechanics, then you have all the extra levers in there as well. Obviously, we have like the runes and hexes, the, the little buffs and debuffs that you get throughout the fight. Um, so with some of them already like affecting your damage in different ways. I can't, I, off the top of my head, I can't even remember what each of them do. Um, well, no, there are a ton of strats now that have that have come kind of in the last several months, especially with the, the really high enrage people where the whole setup now is for phase seven, you want to have the edict order where you deal 36% extra damage when your HP is low. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to get this like really, really nuts second cycle. And it's it's entirely because <laughs> of the edict system that uh, like all of the strats revolve around them, which I think is is really, really cool. It means they were probably balanced in a way that, um, you know, is, is good. You can't just ignore them um, at mm -hmm. any kind of decently high in rage uh, without really hindering yourself. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and the, the edicts kind of came from us wanting to do something in essence kind of similar to like, uh, I want to say Araxor or Virago, where the mechanics change slightly depending on when you're doing it. Um, so the original, I believe the original intention was like the pairings would rotate. So if you like did pad one, on I don't know week one, then it'd be you get hex one and root and edict one. But then if you did it the next week, you'd get hex one and edict two. So oh my goodness! Kind of, but like, then it becomes very hard for players to figure out what they're actually doing because it's kind of stuff that's hidden behind <laughs> the scenes. Um, and it, it's, it's not like Virago where he's like he's, he's now he's doing a, a clock thing. No, right, you would you need like Zamorak class. What's going on. You would actually need to sit down for like exactly. hours and which I'm sure for some players are like, oh, that would have been so cool, but <laughs> I think yeah, that's exactly. nuts. It's, it's, that's one of those where it's like, we could do this, but it's probably only relevant for like players that are above 5k. And if you're doing it below that, it's kind of like you're just adding complexity for the sake of it, and it's not actually achieving anything. No, for sure. I would I would agree with that. Um, just to call back to something you mentioned earlier, that players don't like dealing less damage. Was mm -hmm. that kind of a surprise learning when you look at the demons in the ED4 dungeon? And we'll talk more about the dungeon later, but how they work for anyone who isn't familiar is you can't splash on them, but they have, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically an effect where you can't splash on them, but they have really high defense, and the lower your hit chances, the lower your damage output will actually mm -hmm. be. Yeah, they're a weird one. I'm not sure if I'm talking about the demons or RuneScape players. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> obviously we have the stat defense, right? It has to do something. We can't just pull that out without like changing all content. Um, so the thought there is obviously remove the feel bad that is splashing and we can try out... Um, just a, sl a slightly reduced damage in place of it and see if that removal of, okay, I've done nothing makes it feel any better. I'm not sure if it does or not. I think oh, I think the majority of people in, in, in my kind of spaces or my community, I think it's more annoying hitting a wild magic that does a 3k, 3k. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't want to say more annoying, but I think it's it's kind of equally annoying. But then the question there is, is it equally annoying just because those demons have such such high mm. defense stat because it's like that's, it's absolutely ridiculous because if it was down by maybe five ten percent it probably wouldn't be quite as annoying yeah i mean like if they only had on a level 90 defense that'd be amazing i think they're in the hundreds right now say, say you did a wild magic and you, I don't know, you're hitting 6k 6k instead of 7k 7k that probably wouldn't feel as bad um and obviously if we applied that same thing to basically every mob in the game the majority of the time you'd just be you'd be hitting 99 percent which I I feel like players wouldn't feel bad about that. Whereas if you've got 99% hits hit chance and you throw a wild magic and you see a splash, right? That's ultimate feel bad, right? 
Um, so I, th I think it's one of those where comparatively, if you um, compared a medium low defense with and without the buff, um, then the buff the the buff would probably feel better than live. Um, as in it's right flashing. now those yeah yeah exactly those level 130 defense or demons. If you fought them about the buff right now, I imagine they would feel awful. Like even even worse than players find in the dungeon because it'd be like every hit, every other hit would slash right, and that's just gonna feel awful. Um, I I would agree with that. Um, follow up for that, you kind of mm -hmm. teased and worked on for for one of your game jam projects. It's sort of a removal of of splashing, and I guess my question is: Were those demons sort of a a test to see how that would be received or how that would be implemented? Yeah. Um, I'm very well aware, a bunch of us are, that splashing just feels awful. Um, and it's at the point where it's feeling so bad that a lot of developers don't want to touch defense at all when making a boss or making any kind of NPC, right? Um, I think if you look at the large majority of NPCs, um, made in uh, probably the past two, three years. Um, I reckon the large majority of them you'll hit 100% hit chance without a doubt. Yeah. Um, even with like mid gear. Um, so yeah, it, it was. Um, and obviously, yeah, I did the actually rework as part of Game Jam. Um, that was more, I'd kind of done, obviously, with the demons, I'd done the, the kind of base of it. And it was a bit more of like, how far can we take this? Um, can we make it so it's a stat accuracy that is is a stat that is well well ground in RuneScape, um, but doesn't feel bad like Splashing does right now. Um, and having played with it, I think we achieved that. Like I think it does feel better than live, um, but there's still more I'd want to do. Um, whether that would be a separate project or the same thing, I'm unsure. Um, Do you think RuneScape is going to... Oh, go ahead. No, 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 you go, you go. Uh, well, I'll think on what I was thinking. Okay. Uh, Do you think RuneScape is actually... Because I know Game Jam projects, they a lot of them never make it in the game. Do you think RuneScape is going to be moving in a direction where splashing does eventually actually get removed? Um, I think so, yeah. I think... The team is very well aware that splashing feels bad and so obviously we want players to have fun right um so i think there's kind of a a group acknowledgement that it kind of needs to change um i think mod mod jack especially is big on looking at the systems as a whole and seeing what we can do with them um we can one, in, entwine them more into like progression um, and two, just kind of make them all behave how they should have from the beginning. Um, splashing is a weird thing that feels like it shouldn't have been ported over with EOC. I totally agree um, with that. Like if you're just clicking and leaving your player, splashing doesn't matter. Um, but when you get reactive combat, where it's like, okay, now I need to stun, or now I need to do this, or now I need to do this, that's when it starts feeling bad because, oh, I need to stun. Oh, it didn't hit. Cool, I die. I, I just rolled, I rolled a hundred sided dice and rolled a one, so I die, right? That That's not a fun and interactive experience. No, um, I totally agree. And I think even going beyond that, just when you're looking at manual combat, as a player, to manually make the effort to hit a keybind to fire an ability and have that ability not work, I think is fundamentally mm -hmm. very different from click and wait, and sometimes you hit and sometimes you don't. Yeah, no, absolutely. I completely agree with that. Cool. Um, so circling back to Zami, if you're, if, mm -hmm. unless you had anything else related to, to accuracy that you wanted to, to touch on. I have a question for you regarding accuracy. I, I think. For sure. Let's do it. Um, so old school has stab slash crush in terms of defenses and offensive stats. Would you like to see that sort of thing reintroduced to modern RuneScape? 
So I equip a helm that now increases my stab attack or my slash attack. Um, also increases my stab slash defense, etc. Um, so they're more specific stats to the encounter I'm going into. Um, yeah, I think something along those lines. I, I, I think... It's kind of, it depends on the situation. I think a lot of other things would have to fall into place for it to make sense for me. So mm -hmm. from old school's perspective, they get to have tons of unique different kinds of weapons and it gives them a lot more diversity because different bosses and different monsters require stab, slash, crush, bolts, arrows, whatever else. Um, mm -hmm. I think monster specific weaknesses in RuneScape 3 are terrible. I think they're confusing. Mm -hmm. I think the fact they don't, it's weak to something, but you don't do more damage with it doesn't yep. really make sense. And I think all you get is you get a 40% accuracy buff, which does effectively nothing for most monsters because you have 100% anyway. Um, yep. For me, I would be open to the concept of stab slash crush weapons that are also useful in different areas with a couple of caveats I think that are fairly important. I think having one set of gear used for everything mm -hmm. kind of exists because of how invention works. I think having uh, to go for another set of RNG perks on 20 different d plate bodies and weapons for different, maybe it's a boss, maybe it's a different slayer task, I think that will just kind of punish a casual player more than anything else. So to me, you would need like some kind of perk porting or perk switching capabilities for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but assuming it worked with invention in a way that was interesting and assuming you went back through like different bosses and added different weaknesses, I don't mind it, but also mm -hmm. with the way that the EOC works, like using a slash weapon doesn't feel any different from using a stab weapon. So yep. it seems kind of pointless. So you'd also need to kind of make differences with the types of weapons and how they work with abilities. So I think it would be a huge undertaking, but if done correctly, it would be cool um, mm -hmm. with all those steps taken. And if it was just kind of thrown into the game, I think it would be pretty pointless. Yep, no, I agree with that. I think looking at the game, um it's as issue is again it's kind of the porting to eoc where there were some good ideas that didn't necessarily transition properly to eoc it's like you look at cow fight king it's like cool yeah we'll introduce the, a stab slash and crush dual wield right but that doesn't mean anything and that's really weird um like, there's no functional reason to use long swords over maces for argument, aside from, oh, my anticipate I can auto with something or I get prayer <laughs> bonus, right? Yeah, yeah, I it, can already it, see people in my chat typing weird. off and long sword autos or prayer bonus, yeah, it's but like, it's niche, it's, it doesn't matter. That, that's, that's like, that needs changing in some form. And that's the kind of thing I hope that as we kind of fix the combat system and um, develop it further that we'll be able to get rid of those weird interactions that mean nothing and actually give meaning to this this stuff again um so obviously pre-oc all this stuff had meaning right there was there was a reason for me to go and take a crush weapon to a certain mob if it had a crush weakness right um and it, it just feels it's been a long time that these things have sat there and i think it's the team right now seems really positive on fixing these sorts of things and uh yeah making the system better that's a huge undertaking oh absolutely like to go through what over 10 years of content now and make changes to every single aspect of it it just seems like a massive massive project but i mean if done correctly i i think it would be good i think it's part of i mean we, we've, t we've spoken on this before so i'm not going to get too far into it but a lot of the reasoning for why combat is so confusing, I think, to newer players are things like weaknesses not really mattering mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah. you have redundancies in, in weapon types and classes. So I, I think removing some of that or actually just making the, you know, differences actual, I think is is probably if, if you know, if, if you've got the dev time for it, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, I feel like a lot of our issues comes from throwing a lot of stuff in new players' faces that doesn't mean anything. So it's just a distraction from your, from what you're supposed to actually do, right? Yeah, um, I would it's agree. It's kind of like all the junk abilities we throw at people. They don't need to exist. Why are they there, right? We have, I don't know, say, 20 me melee basics. 
and you rotate through like three or four of them. Yeah. And <laughs> if we had one ability with a, with a 1.8 second cooldown, you just use that. Like, I feel like... You're describing g don't... Yeah, Exactly. Like, <laughs> half these things don't need to exist. It's just unnecessary complexity that we can do better than. So would you then also want to go through a bunch of less used abilities and... I guess you're not talking about updating them. You're talking about basically canning them, just for simplicity's sake. Um, there's some I'd want to can. There's some that I'd want to rework, um, or modify. Um, we've had discussions like this before. I've, I think I've had it in the design PVM in runes in the RuneScape channel as well, which is like a lot of our basics could just be auto attacks if we redid the auto system, right? Um. Because the player that throws on Revo, right, they're just auto attacking really when you kind of take a step back from it. They're right clicking the thing and leaving it and just letting the basics happen. It's just that a bunch of other small effects also occur. Right, That could just be auto attacks and they wouldn't lose anything. Okay. Um, it'd be this. It'd be the same deal. Like, say say we buffed Rack to be, I don't know, a, a 188 with a 1.8 second cooldown. That's just an auto attack, right? That's just yeah. your standard basic that you throw at the front of your bar, and now you do that whenever you're not doing anything else. Like, yeah. there is, it, like, there, there's so many random abilities with so many random damage ranges that it just, it, it, again, it just feels like a lot of complexity that doesn't necessarily need to be there. Do you feel like that would take away from people who play on manual that actually like all of those specific small niche effects? Um, I feel like we can do better for those players. Um, again, this is only my opinion. Of course. Not, not even the rest of the team necessarily feels like it, but I feel like we don't actually necessarily add much to the game by having a basic ability rotation. Like me knowing to press Havoc and other ability than other ability doesn't necessarily add that much. If you can add those small interactions that lets me get out more dps through more meaningful ways i feel like that's actually better for players because then they can focus on the fight itself rather than going oh this ability is up i'll press this one oh this ability is up i'll press this one and we can do more interesting like ultimates and thresholds um because the player is not distracted by this weird basic rotation I think when you first brought the idea up, I was like very against it. I was like, that's crazy just that you have one basic. But I think when you when you explain it that way, I think it, it depends a lot on what these other meaningful interactions are. And I'd love to ask or follow up if you have any examples of what that interaction could be. If it's like, I don't know, like is it a is it a switch? Is it different thresholds? Is it Um Let me think for a second. Um you can tell this isn't concrete because I'm thinking on the spot, right? Um, I think it's... So right now, we have abilities like Sever. Sever reduces the damage your target does, I believe. It's either damage or their hit chance. It's either the same as yeah, Stagger or the same like as that, right? One of the two, yeah. Right? You're not using it for that effect. That's just there for no reason, right? <laughs> I'm using it for the, for the damage number that's attached that to it. 13k so, Zami people are molding right now. Oh yeah, all, I see, yeah. All, all I need my 10%. At you. I no, need go, it. Yeah, no, I, I know, I know um, what you mean though, I agree. But like, that, that, we could just rework that. Now it does fuck all damage, but, you know, I take like 30% reduced, reduced damage, right? And it's, it's a more meaningful interaction. If I'm just like, Cool. Zami's about to do this big thing. I need to pop this this damage reduction thing, right? So, um, and I can think on the spot rather than going, oh, slice, sever, uh, basic, 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 right? So I, you, you, I you, oh, go ahead. Go for it. Go for it. So I guess what you're kind of getting at is your gripe with abilities is, even though they all have effects, you're not using them for the effects. You're using them for the damage number. Yes. Yes. And I feel like the damage part, that that's just an auto attack, right? That's that's how it feels to me. Like I could just be autoing right now. And if it did the same damage, I would be. And that way, when I want the damage reduction, I can use the damage reduction. And then I have a meaningful interaction. But right now I'm using Sever for damage and I'm getting damage reduction for no real reason. That's weird. 
that that's just how it is i um, i agree with that completely <laughs> and don't, don't don't even get me started on rack oh my goodness rack is rack is pain um <laughs> like i just I, that's like that doesn't need to exist rack doesn't need to exist or if it does, it need again. It could just be the basic you spam. Didn't you make or, rack and ruin? That was you, wasn't it? I did. I made rack and ruin, <laughs> and rack and ruin has a purpose in that it's twenty-four blood runs down the drain. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, let me just consume some bloods out of my bag. It's like with rack and ruin, the intention is cool. I need a sudden burst of damage at the cost of uh, reduced future damage, right? Yeah. Um, Whereas rack, the stun part is weird. The damage range is weird. If you're using it, you probably shouldn't be using it. And you're probably bad. Rack, rack's, rack's one of those abilities. You're either, if you're using it, you're either probably not very good at the game, or you're very good at the game and you know exactly what you're doing. There's no in between. Well, I was gonna say you're talking about how terrible rack is, and I agree. It's like it's an it's a noob trap, right? Because like you'll see exactly. a lot of people will say PVM is easiest if you put the lowest cooldowns abilities first, right? It's just more simple. Mm. So you have people rack with Q and then like whatever. So you're spamming Q every second ability. Um which is I guess your idea of an auto attack. But for like every single high end like Telos rotation on anything stunnable, Ice Rack is is very, very widely used. So but yeah, I totally agree. It's either a trap or it's very specifically used for the effect though. It's used for the stun effect. Or for mm -hmm. the, the, the damage rough to stun. Exactly and then at which point it's just a one eighty eight, right? I believe. Uh yeah. Slightly. It's one eighty eight. Um I think. it's like if if my rotation just averaged out at every ability is 188 through autos or one basic or a few basics that i kind of rotated for you rather than this weird number um i feel like it'd be a lot more satisfying when when you do do a combo that is what i feel rack is supposed to feel like where it's like cool stun do this thing for huge damage and it's like a tool cool two-part combo right now it's like stun do this thing for damage and it feels exactly the same as any other 188 right that's it doesn't feel great it's not again it doesn't feel very meaningful i feel like to players i think it's meaningful only i i think people in my chat are, are, are some people are kind of molding at that just because i think it feels very <laughs> meaningful specifically blaming their rack usage <laughs> it's just for telos i think it's pretty meaningful because you've already got a stun rotation so mm -hmm. you've got things like if you need extra Adren, you can cancel your Asphyx early with a Rack. And that last Rack hit will do the same amount of damage as the last yeah. Asphyx hit, but you'll get extra Adren for it. Stuff like that that does actually, I think, feel pretty meaningful. But I would agree with you that outside yep. of, like, some endgame uses, yeah, Rack is kind of a waste of an ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and it's just like, I, I feel like we as a team kind of need to step back, look at all of this sort of thing, um, and see... How can we make the combat system feel good here? Um, which is very hard because players, players are going to be set in what they know. Yeah. They're like, well, I like to rotate between these eight abilities that for X reason I get this amount of damage out. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard one. Obviously, I feel like players are probably actually... Some players will be, would be very positive to that sort of thing, but some wouldn't. Um, so it's a hard one. I think that would be huge for less experienced players. And I think for mm. people that have spent years and years and years perfecting the combat system as it is now, that is a terrifying statement. It's like, wait, but all of this, <laughs> all of this muscle memory, all of this. Um, but I, uh, I'm generally like of the stance that if something can be almost unanimously good for kind of making combat easier to read easier to learn easier for a new player to me that's mm -hmm. kind of what runescape needs even though yep. for me personally i think that would make my experience less fun a little bit interesting and that's that's the thing though like it's not something we could just do um because like you said you as a player and the high-end players would just be like oh this is less fun um and you can't you can't just cater to to one type of player you kind of have to take it all on board and see is it for the greater good or is it just appealing to one audience yeah um, exactly so yeah it's, it's definitely a hard one um it's a hard one to get right i feel like um like mm, yeah i don't know i don't know what the answer is for that really 
Okay. It's one of those things that needs a yeah needs a, a big full design for someone to do. I uh, I think I I have the hero that we need. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's you. Good luck. It's more, it's more ramen. Let me let me spin it off to him. He's we good. we bring back pie. <laughs> Just for one him, yeah. last gig, one last final hurrah. Yo, please. The final please pie heist. <laughs> um. No, that's all. That's all really big sweeping stuff. But I think, in general, the concept of looking at the systems that combat kind of relies on and plays mm -hmm. on, it's a ten plus year old system that is generally pretty clunky. So I think looking yeah. at it and making improvements to it probably not a bad thing to do. I think that's my overall point. Even if you don't like anything I've just said, I think my main point is that we as a team want to look at the system more than individual bits and see how we can just make the entire feel of combat better rather than this specific thing i think that's the takeaway there is that yeah yeah i i, I would agree with that so relating to the zamorak release this is kind of a, a very open question but um well how how pleased were you with it were you what were you happy with maybe were there any things that came with the zami release or maybe with the current iteration of the boss now after some some balancing stuff that you weren't happy with Ooh, happy and not happy with um my personal take is i feel like it was bloated as a the project as a whole was bloated um i'm not sure where the fault there is but like it was a boss it was solo it was group but it was an elite dungeon but you could skip the elite dungeon but <laughs> But it, it was story mode and normal mode and enrage mode and the enrage went up to 60k. But the enrage mode was for solo and groups and it's just like there is too much going on. Like there, there was there was yeah, it there was just too much going on. Um so I feel like a lot of the pitfalls that Zamorak had were as a result of the project became bloated. There, there was too many people that were trying to be pleased with the update um rather than going cool let's just make the best group boss it was let's make the best group boss for uh enrage story mode normal mode dungeon runners people that just want to do bosses and it, it that's that's too much in my opinion i i think when you try um, to please everyone all at once you end up pleasing nobody exactly um and I think that's that's where Zamorak suffered. I think if we'd taken a step back and tried to please a few a few less player types, I think it would categorically have just been the best boss in the game. I think there's there's a couple of yeah, there's a couple of pitfalls it ran into where it was trying to do too much, which doesn't necessarily mean it hit that. I think you've touched on it a couple times, but I think a lot of players have, I don't want to say a gripe, but I think, I think there are a lot of questions about the enrage system that we can, we can touch on later, but I think I, I want to talk about the dungeon and the 25 full dungeon runs requirement. Um, yep. just to kind of, I don't know if that was one that was implemented by you or one that you can speak on, but, um, I think for a lot of players, it's more normal mode dungeon runs than what mm -hmm. seems like well, the, it would make actually sense. Spend doing bossing, yeah. Yeah, because it's like um, probably forty minutes per run for an average player. So you're looking at like what 16, 17 hours of normal mode Zamorak yeah. dungeon runs just to access the boss, and then the skip to that is just know someone that's done it, and then you don't have to do it. Mm hmm. Yep. No, I completely agree with you. Um, yeah, that's a weird one, and the, that again. I think the issue of that is I don't think the dungeon run skip should exist personally. I think it should either be an elite dungeon or it should just been a boss, right? Yeah. I don't like this weird middle ground. Um, 25 being too much, probably. Um, <clears throat> the idea behind that is... <clears throat> We're gonna bother doing an elite dungeon you want players to do it right but at the same time we were like okay but players want to do the boss and we're spending so much effort on this boss we want players to just be able to repeat the boss rather than feeling like they have to go through this dungeon and feel burnt out by it um so yeah 
25 probably is too much um, and it probably should have or could in the future come down um <clears throat> it was very much that thing where it was like yeah we want we want players to do the dungeon because we're doing a dungeon would, um would you ever consider making changes to the dungeon itself i uh making aspects of it a little shorter like kind of fast tracking yeah. to the jailer or fast tracking yeah, to the voice that's uh the boss's voice about black witch just yeah, to like yeah. get through it so that it's a 10 minute dungeon in line with the other elite dungeons as opposed to this very very lengthy bloated dungeon mm -hmm. yep no I, I i agree with that um i know an ag agility shortcuts and stuff where you can just jump over the bridge instead of doing the whole underground bit um i think part of that as well is that the the bosses the mini bosses like the two required ones there's is that three there's uh, two. two required ones yeah two well required. and the demon is that kind of counts but yeah he's kind of uh, i think he's... you can skip him though well, you don't have to kill the demon, but you have to wait for the demon to eat all the mages. Or you kill the mages yourself. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they all have like um, so you, Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> like, if... I think if the two mini-bosses had been more like Astalan and Varakliff, where they had these really cool uniques and you felt good by doing them, it wouldn't have felt so bad because it'd be like, cool, a little bit of dungeon, cool boss that I want to interact with instead of this annoying guy that teleports around. A uh, little bit of dungeon, cool boss that's actually interesting instead of this thing that just like blows you up if you step on the wrong tile. Um, then it would have probably felt better. Um, I I would agree the, with that. The, uh, yeah, it, it's it's in a weird state overall. Um, but no, yeah, I'd be down for for changing it. Um, I don't know what what bits or specifics, but yeah, no, I absolutely would. Cool. Um, yeah, I just yeah. kind of wanted to gauge your thoughts on that because I think the dungeon is like it's a beautiful area and like from a story perspective, it's it's really, really cool to get to explore it. But then when you're running it over and over again, like I, I'm sure you have the data on it somewhere, but doing I, I'm assuming most players have done the 25 runs and never gone back. I, I would assume there aren't that many players that were like, dude, I love do this full dungeon. dungeon. Let's do the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, part of that, <coughs> I part of that, it's it's. It's hard to know if that is this one specifically or if that's just like an elite dungeon thing. Like, if you could just go kill Ambassador, would you ever do that dungeon again? Probably not. Unless it's to cheese some XP out, right? I don't I don't think you'd ever go do ED3 again if you could just do the Ambassador over and over again. I mean, I personally like Terracet just because I think it's a really fun boss, but I know people are going <laughs> to roast me for saying that, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for saying no, that. that, that but... That's fair. Okay, but like... But the bosses are, are a little more meaningful, and they're they're kind of fun. Exactly, right? Even if they don't have, like, cool drops, the bosses are more meaningful than Mr. Jailer, right? Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that, which is, I mean, the, the Jailer is basically just death that starts now. That's the, uh, exactly. the current play. Um, cool. Yeah. I wanted to get your, your thoughts on that. Cause that's been one that I've seen a lot of as people wishing they had access to Zami because I think, I don't know, especially in the last month, I have personally gotten way into Zami. It is my favorite activity in the entire <laughs> game by far. Um, I've been solo pushing on my main. I've been doing 2k kills on my main for GP. And I've also joined the, the pushing team as well. So I've done like just over 12,000 in rage with them as well. Um, and then I'm playing on my hardcore and I'm doing the full runs on the hardcore as well. Like I'm basically just doing Zami across all accounts right now. And uh, wow. I think as I do it, I, I think people come in and are like, man, how do I do this boss? And it's like, well, yeah, get your runs ready. <laughs> Good luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I, I don't disagree at all. Um, and that's kind of goes back to me feeling like the project was probably bloated. I should have just should have just been the boss the issue with that is obviously we want we wanted it to be more narratively driven than other bosses and it's like how much narrative can you um deliver in just a single boss fight yeah no. whereas the dungeon the dungeon you can deliver so much more right um, yeah, unless you want more lore phases, which I don't think uh, <laughs> yeah. goes too well. <laughs> now see him, watch him do his monologue for 10 minutes. You should have done for 1k plus for Zami. There should have been a phase 8 and Zami just reads you a story. <laughs> you get the quiz master from the And it gets random, longer and, and longer. And questions about Zami. Yeah, no, there's a quiz at the end and if you don't get the quiz right, you don't get 80% on the quiz, you don't get loot. And the questions get, you get an extra question added every 1k in Rage. 
<laughs> um, speaking of, of Zami specifically, um, the drops have been adjusted a bunch of times. So you've got this crazy bad luck mitigation system. Um, how Oof. do you feel about where that has ended up? What did you think of the 50% enrage meta? What do you think about it now? Um, it's like took up so much of my life i feel like <laughs> after release where i was just trying to get the system in a place that felt good for everyone um i'm sure some of the balancing teams annoyed with me as well because i was just like constantly like what can we change they don't like it or <laughs> they don't like this bit or this bit sucks or even myself i don't like this bit um yeah <sighs> It's too. Uh, I can't help but feel like there's too much going on, and th th it kind of leans into why I personally don't actually really like enrage bosses. Um, I, my, my personal take, I, I'd like to just to see a, a really hard boss, and that be, that be it. Like, take take I don't know, two K, Zami as a boss, and it's just a boss. There's no enrage nonsense. It's just a boss, and he's just that hard. And then in the future, you just make a ten K. This is just a ten K boss. The range doesn't go up. It's just a really hard boss. Would, that 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 would be my ideal world. Would you ever get clearance to do that though, or is there such a push for making everything as accessible as possible? Like, do you do you realistically think that you could you could wake up and get handed a project and it's like, all right, Brad, we want you to make the hardest boss in the game standalone? Nah, that that wouldn't happen. It, you don't think nah. it would happen anymore? Nah, nah, nah. nah. That's too bad. I, I don't. I don't think so. Not a proper boss. Um, like, you look at Zuck. Zuck was fairly hard, I guess. Um, and it was kind of a challenge boss. Like, it didn't really have a story mode. I guess normal mode. But even normal mode's like, I'd say normal mode's fairly difficult. I reckon that's probably as far as we'd push it. Um, yeah, I reckon that's as far as we'd, we'd probably get to push it nowadays. So then it's got to I, I say some form I, I of say, <laughs> Yeah, I say nowadays. I don't know really. Um, it's a hard one. Yeah, no. I'd, I'd I'd like to see us do like a like the old school style raids where you kind of go in, you get some hard stuff, and you you kind of reach about a bit doing all different sorts. Um, That's that would be funny because cool. I was about to ask you about old school's TOA as an alternative to mm. enrage because this dynamic enrage system where you have to set up. 12 different drop rates and 12 different bad luck modifiers and have them perfectly scaled for kill times seems kind of crazy very very complicated yeah, and probably i mean i totally agree that i mean i think it's as complicated as it needs to be because of how dramatically the difficulty changes but you're effectively making a boss with 20 different difficulty levels and having to scale that up can be really really uh well it can be challenging and time consuming so there's, yeah, there's so many levers behind the scenes. Would you um, ever? Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Keep going, keep going. Would you ever do a boss or a raid or a dungeon that was scaled sort of like TOA for old school? So how that works I, for anyone who's not familiar, which is probably a lot of people, um, it's effectively an enrage boss with like four or five difficulty modes or possibly more than that. But every enrage is unlocked and you can just select it. Every additional difficulty level you go up, you get different mechanics. So it's pre-portioned, it's pre-set up um, with specific, if you add this mechanic, your drop rate goes up by this much. I think that's where I'd like Enrage to go to personally. Um, I'm I'm not super keen on the dynamic thing. Um, I think, yeah, it, it, add, it adds so much that somewhere in the life system somewhere feels bad it doesn't matter what boss you're on right i feel like somewhere in the enrage system is going to feel bad and it's inevitable yeah um but having kind of like yeah four or five checkpoints of difficulty um means you can focus on four and five instead of looking at a hundred fifty thousand <laughs> right yeah, yeah of course yeah I, I, i'd love to do that sort of thing i think that'd be great i think a, a follow-up to that is you know considering you're talking about possibly you know just having it unlocked and having different difficulties that the player can select um how do you feel about pushing the the idea of grinding or gaining in rage um whether that's applied to zami or to other bosses as well um i think right now it's necessary 
because we don't necessarily have those super high-end combat achievements for players to get. So we need it right now. Um, <laughs> so say we removed Enrage tomorrow, right? What what would you be going and doing? You'd just be like, go on, just go and farm 0% Zamorax because that's all there is, right? There'd be nothing for you as a player to Well, I don't mean necessarily removing Enrage. I mean removing the pushing aspect of it. Oh, so like, um, so like you TOA, like you can buster. set it up as hard as you want it right from the get go. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, have to yeah, beat yeah. all oh, the previous I ones. So you're, you're, yeah, the, the kind of the grind. Yeah. The climb the, itself. The end. Um, I feel like it probably isn't necessary, but I, it's not something we could remove. Um, cause obviously then you're removing players, uh, achievements, right? It's like solo zami as an example or someone say someone's on 9910k it's like cool i've committed to getting to this number um and you see my commitment but f through my current enrage like that that's taken however yeah long you can only gain like 30 percent an hour it's e crazy exact, exactly right um yeah it's a weird one i i don't i don't have any personal love for it i'd say is how i'd say it um like, I don't think it would matter if it was removed. Um, I don't think it needs to exist. Um, like, so, say, say we'd never made him rage and was making it tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know if we'd add it or not. That's a really hard question. Because it does add this level of engagement for players where, like, cool, I'm going to just keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing. Um like say say it wasn't there i feel like there would be some method where players go cool 60k is doable that's the max we do 60k done and then it's like cool now there's there's no interest in how far <laughs> like it just it just it just kind of kills the uh yeah so so it's more of a legacy achievement it's it sort of it's yeah. in the game for that more than anything else because for group enrage it, it unlocks you can as long as someone on the team has completed an enrage like you and i you could go start a 12k right, yeah. kill right now if you wanted to um and i think a lot of I, I think it's just been a popular discussion point is obviously on that 12k team some people have been there for all the kills and have grinded mm -hmm. all the way up and then there are people like That's me that were added up. added to the team a month ago taught all the strats yeah. learned it completed the kill and then it's is the difficulty aspect completing the kill and and being able to do it or is it actually supposed to be the grind to pushing and i think there's a discrepancy between what it's like in solo and what it's like in group because in group mm -hmm. it's the difficulty of the kill more than anything else um for the majority of players because like i don't think really anyone pushed a 2k themselves in a group you'd go with someone else get a 2k kill and then you'd start farming your own 2k kills whereas in solo it's this completely different 10 percent at a time kind of kind of grind up the high scores yeah 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 um and i guess is that okay I, would I, be a better follow-up question like is it okay that the two I, are viewed I don't so know. yeah i don't know um i feel like the uh, like there was a few mess ups after the release of zami like i don't personally think you probably you should have been able to steal other players progress not steal but um borrow forever you know i mean yeah borrow forever yeah <laughs> duplicate duplicate i think is the word i don't think that should have happened um and i think if we made it again it would be like you, you don't borrow forever you the intention was you could join so i don't feel like oh i i didn't play today so now i've missed out and i have to go do all this stuff by myself right that was what we wanted to avoid Oh, so if I do a 12k kill with the pushing team, instead of my enrage then being 12k, my enrage would be 10% higher than my previous yeah, highest exa completed. Yeah, exa exactly. So, so like, I don't feel like I've missed out. Um, I'm still pushing towards my goal, e even if we're just sitting there grinding 12k's. So. Which I mean, you you would never really do though, because the drops cap at 2k. But yeah, ex ex exactly. But say say I'm grinding this arbitrarily high enrage, because that's what my team wants to do. I'm not punished for that. And I'm still pushing up my enrage because I've proven that I could have done 2Ks because I'm doing 12Ks, right? So it, that's... I think that's how it should have... 
See, gone for groups. It's it's really interesting because I think if you did that, I think there's a lot more kind of parody would be a good word. It feels a little more, between you know, you can actually, groups, right? yeah. between solo and group and also like the people that have pushed the furthest and done the most high in rage kills have the highest in rage to show for it. But yes. I also do think for the high in rage pushing people, and I know a lot of them are in my chat right now, I think it would be hard to find people to go with, honestly. And I think it would be a hard sell to teach a new person and say, hey, can you help us get 13K? You're going to get 80% in rage unlocked for doing that. Like, I think the the difficulty mm. of finding people to go with would be way, way higher where I think, like they recently, there were two separate teams of three that were pushing and they've now combined to six and they've added a couple other others. Yeah, yeah. And now there are, I think there are nine or 10 people now that are all kind of pushing together. And how it networks yeah. is... The other, like, there could be a team doing threes right now. They could gain some enrage, then someone could hop off. I could sub in for someone, and we could kind of keep pushing it. And that's why progress has and been a lot quicker. Lead, then you could lead your own team at some point if you wanted to, right? Yeah, I could host, and um, I could bring people from that team as well. So how do you feel about kind of that system? Does it make sense, or would you still rather have kind of gone back and kept it in line with Solo? Um, I think... Oh, it's really hard, right? I feel, I'm not sure if there is a right answer to this. Um, but yeah, like you said, I'd rather like, oh no, the guy that had the 12Ks logged off, we can't do this anymore. That feels shit, right? That's not good. Um, see, I, I, I think, oh, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what the best solution, it'd be some solution where... Because I guess what would happen um, is like... Sorry to cut. Sorry to cut you off. No, but no, whoever no, no, had the highest it. would have to start every instance. <laughs> exactly right? right, and that's not good. Like Raw would literally have great. to quit his job. Yeah, right? he'd be yeah, getting just... PM'd every two minutes. Hey, can you start Andy a kill for us? for us? Yeah, cool, done. <laughs> that doesn't. That, yeah, that doesn't feel good. Um, and I, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like the system could be improved for sure. I just don't know the exact way to do it. To be honest um there's a lot going on in the system and maybe that's part of it it's probably a bit bloated um but again it might it, it, it kind of comes down to part of my problem with enrage like if it was more like the uh the old school raids where it's like cool we're just going to toggle on hard 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 cool we're in the hardest mode and we can just go at it if we can do it it seems so much easier <laughs> You're right. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Like, yeah, I, I think that probably moving forward, I, I'm sure it's a learning experience with regard to things getting way, way overcomplicated. I'm going to ask yes. one last Zami kind of enraged question, just because I, I don't think it's super important, but a lot of people have been, been spamming it. Um, I think I can probably guess what your answer would be based on what we've just discussed. But how would you feel about changing the amount of percentage gained per kill? from 10 to like, I don't know, 25 as an option. Uh, do you think that devalues people who've already done it so you probably wouldn't touch it? It probably does devalue players, especially solo, but I don't really have an opinion on it. I'd, okay. If, if, if Raman came up to me tomorrow and went, yeah, cool, I'm changing it to 25, I'd be like, sure. Like, I'm sure you've made the proper assessment. Okay. Um, it doesn't bother me to the extent where I feel like the changes need to happen. At the same time, if someone else was like, I want to make these changes, and I have the time to make these changes, I'd be like, go for it. Yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. It was kind of a, it's kind of a stupid question. I, I guess it's one of those where it's like, at what point do you stop? Like, cool, now it adds 100, or now it adds 200, or now it adds 1,000. Right? Well, what's the number? Is there a proper number? Yeah. Is there a correct number for it to stop? No, absolutely. I would agree with you. And then people are talking about maybe make it a dynamic system so that if your enrage is this, and you've completed this amount, your max and rage gets gained by oh, this amount. It, that sounds oh, no. like it would be really what? cool, but I'm looking at it, I'm like, I don't think they have time to do this <laughs> or That's to figure like, this out. It, is, it, is it worth that time investment? I guess is the question at that point. Is, like, is it worth someone's going and spending a couple of days figuring out a brand new way for you to gain an arbitrary amount of enrage? No, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Okay, relating to Zami, could we talk about solo mode? A little bit. Go for it. Um, so there are kind of two schools of thought with solo. Some people, solo is way too hard. It shouldn't be two runes. It should be one rune. Demon should have a lower mm -hmm. HP because it doesn't scale. Um, and then there are the people that have learned solo and are like, well, my solo kills are three minutes slower than the group kills, and it's a group boss, so that kind of makes sense. So I mm -hmm. guess my question for you is, 
did you guys look into making changes to solo and if so if, if it came to the decision to not make changes to solo mode zami um kind of what what maybe led to that decision um so myself and ramen spoke about it quite a bit actually after launch um at the time obviously we was dealing with the kind of the, the bugs and the more important feedback i'd, I'd say that probably sounds a bit harsh because obviously solo mode is important no you have to triage stuff uh, exactly exactly um and i think we're both in the boat where we're like yes we'd like to change it it just comes down to time and if we can get time to do that um so maybe in a game jam or something if we're able to um my again it comes down to project bloat for me i like i feel if it was just a group boss you wouldn't have this problem right and then it's players going cool i want to solo this group boss go for it it's a group boss you do you it's going to be harder because it's a group boss I... so right now we're going we're going you can do solo or you can do group that's when i go mm, they should probably feel the same amount of difficulty yeah, it's, like, yeah for sure Go, uh, go ahead. You, you, you as a player going into raids and solo in Durzag or whatever, like, cool, go for it. We've not advertised that as solo. It's going to be harder. We're not going to make it as easy as just going into raids with a team, unless like obviously you have a trash team that ends up getting you killed. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I feel like because it's there is a solo mode and there is a group mode. I think the solo should be on par with a group in terms of how difficult it is. So you'd, um, you'd make it completely even? As much as you can. Um, I wouldn't like... I don't... I wouldn't nerf his damage or anything. Um, but yeah, I think like... Reducing the number of runes or doing something like that. Because that bit's a clear pain point where it's like, cool, this sucks compared to group. I think that's the sort of thing I'd do um yeah i wouldn't be like cool we're gonna make him tier 70 damage because you're on your own yeah it's um, it's interesting yeah but I, I yeah i think i think like the infernus part in particular that comes across to me as like this shouldn't be as hard as it is in solo just because you go you go kill the witch and then the bosses heal the ton right yeah yeah exactly um yeah, they, 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 there's just a lot of the solo <laughs> stuff that I feel like could be cleaned up when compared to group. It's interesting. I think because when the boss was advertised, it was this is a group boss with a solo accessibility mode. And yeah. if it's viewed under that lens, I think solo's more or less, and I know people are going to roast you for saying this, I think solo is more or less fine through that lens. Um, because... It is a little bit harder. Your kill is going to be probably 20% slower and your difficulty is going to be slightly higher. But if mm -hmm. it is supposed to be a solo and a group boss, um, to me, you make the demon HP scale. I don't know about going to one rune. One rune would... Yeah, I don't, know, I, I don't yeah. think one rune... I don't know I, if I'd go to one, but maybe like half their HP. Yeah, something. scaling their HP could, could make just, perfect just sense. Just do, yeah. some, do something, because right now it's a bit of a pain. I think the other really, really big one is in groups. What happens is I don't know if you know about this. Uh oh, this might be, this uh, this might be a bit uh, a bit monka s here. But um, let me write up a Jiro in there right now. So, in groups, what happens when the boss phases is everyone in the group goes into the infernus to kill the witch, right? Except for the base. Yeah. The base spams bleeds on the boss. Yeah. The boss uh -huh. doesn't heal on ticks that it takes bleed damage, so you can just completely stall the heal in place. Well, not completely, but more or less. And that is the biggest difference between solo and group. It's not that the witch has too many H too much HP. It's that there's no one bleeding the boss to stall the heal. That's why that sounds like a bug. I'm... Did you not know that? Oh no. Oh, what have I done? I'm so sorry. I'd need to look at the code <laughs> on it. I, I I didn't do the inferno spots. It might it could be intentional, I don't know. Kicked from team. Um, Kicked from team. Yeah. Everybody's mad at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the base tank bleeds the boss and it doesn't heal because it's being bled. Um, or it, do, it it heals, but it heals a lot less. It's like on the ticks. I think it's on the ticks that the bleed hits. It doesn't heal. Oh, it, it, uh, so I, people I chuck magma and everything else. Yeah. I, ma uh, I imagine it would be that because I'm dealing damage to it, it's then going to the lowest HP amount that it can be on. 
Um, so the hill's going up, and then my damage is immediately ticking that back down, maybe? Yeah, I so I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So, like, if it was, like, oh, 402k, it, it, yeah, yeah, it goes that, yeah. slightly under, and then it ticks back up to 402k yes. yeah, every yeah, time. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. That's what I meant by stalling the heal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That, that's one of the... It's so hard, because it was... I feel like a lot of it was very much designed as a group boss. And part of it was, like, when we was designing those mechanics, it was like, cool leave some people outside to keep his health low whilst other people go and deal with the witch. That was part of the design. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, again, comes down to it, it's so hard to design something for both group and solo to have it feel good. I think, um, for, for what it's worth, I think it's a cool strategical thing in, in group that the base yeah. has to, one, not die, and two, drop all of the bleeds. And especially with magma as well, it's like you have to be really careful when you move the boss or it heals 50k. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. I actually, I personally like it, but that's, I think one of the things, and I could be wrong, but uh, people in chat who've done a lot of solo can, can, can probably weigh in here. I've done a decent amount. I'm like 1300 edition rage. Um, but you end up with a max heal very, very frequently at higher in rages yeah, just yeah, because yeah. you, you will bleed it before you go in, but your bleeds will expire. Yes, absolutely.